In this video, I'll be removing the power steering system on a Porsche 944 and installing a custom manual steering kit. The power steering systems on the 944 have become increasingly difficult to maintain with age. As the seals in the system dry out and fail, a number of leaks can develop across the various components. To remedy this, there are a few potential solutions. One, many of the parts can be replaced or rebuilt with new seals. Two, the power steering rack can instead be depowered, which can result in some steering vagueness unless the pinion is disassembled and modified so that the spline shaft is permanently affixed to the torque rod inside the rack. Or three, a true manual steering solution can be sourced. The challenge here is that manual steering only came standard on the 1982 European spec cars and the 1983 models, after which power steering became standard in 1984. Since the manual steering rack is no longer in production, the only Porsche option that remains would be to track down a 40-year-old rebuilt rack. But as an alternative, there are some custom kits available that have been assembled from various automotive parts to fit the 944, which is what we'll be looking at today. This is a setup created by Martin Willis out of Colorado, who is widely known for his brake work on the Porsche 356, and he offers a number of steering solutions through his machine shop. The kit includes a modified manual steering rack with new rod ends, tie rods, rubber boots, rack bushings, and a new intermediate shaft. It's built as a direct replacement for the power steering rack by using the same mounting points, the same rod end tapers, and it comes fully assembled for easy installation. The rack itself is derived from the Mark I Volkswagen Rabbit. The tie rods are sourced from the Volkswagen Scirocco, and the tie rod ends are borrowed from the 1983 to 1986 Toyota Camry. The intermediate steering shaft features spline connections attached by some nice thick welds, and we can see here that it's about two inches longer than the factory power shaft. Benefits of the manual conversion include an improved steering ratio over a depowered rack, where the manual rack has a ratio of 131 millimeters for three and a half turns versus 141 millimeters for the factory power rack, which would ultimately result in a heavier feel. After weighing the components for each system, the power steering setup came to 29.4 pounds, and the manual steering system came to 15.4 pounds, which is a weight reduction of about 14 pounds. And of course, the best part is that you won't have to sort out any steering fluid leaks with the manual system going forward. To complete the manual steering conversion, we'll need to remove the front sway bar from the car, disconnect the hydraulic lines and drain the power steering fluid, remove the power steering pump, remove the fluid reservoir, remove the cooling line, and remove the power steering rack. To remove the rack, the 19 millimeter nuts on the tie rod ends will need to be loosened and then a tie rod removal tool can be applied to separate the rod ends from the steering knuckles on each side. The 13 millimeter nut and bolt on the intermediate shaft can then be removed and the connection loosened using a pry bar or a ball joint separator, after which the four 13 millimeter mounting bolts securing the rack to the cross member can be removed and the rack pulled away from the car. The intermediate shaft will also need to be disconnected from the steering column at the firewall just below the brake booster where it may be easier to sneak a separator tool down from above rather than below and with all the parts removed the new steering system can be installed. Next we'll be approximating the lengths for the steering linkage on each side so you can either measure the end-to-end -end distance of the old rack or lay the two parts out side by side for comparison. At this point, we'll need to center the manual steering rack internally, which is done by turning the shaft lock to lock and marking the endpoints. Start by turning the shaft all the way in one direction until it stops, taking care not to damage the splines. Then mark some connecting lines on the shaft and the metal plate at the top of the steering gear tower. Next, turn the shaft in the opposite direction until it stops and mark a third line on the metal plate that aligns with the mark on the shaft. And finally, turn the shaft back about one and three quarters turns so that the line on the shaft is centered between the two lines on the metal plate and mark the center point. After centering the rack and laying the pieces out with the mounting points parallel, we can see that the VW rack mounts a little off center, so the linkage on one side will end up being longer than the other when it's set correctly. Here, it's just a matter of turning the tie rods to adjust the spacing for the tie rod ends. And once the measurements align to the old rack, the clamps on the tie rod ends can be tightened down. You'll need to perform some fine tuning once the rack is on the car and a professional alignment is certainly recommended, but this should be close enough to get started. To get the parts mounted to the car, the first thing we'll need to do is install the new intermediate shaft at the firewall. I took a few minutes to clean up the splines on the existing shaft here so that the installation would be a little bit easier. The bracket should be inserted so that the bolt hole aligns with the notch cut in the shaft. Then the two pieces can be joined and the 13 millimeter nut and bolt can be installed and tightened to 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds. 
Once the steering shaft is locked down, it's a good idea to clean up the aluminum threads on the cross member with a thread chaser. These mounting bolts have the tendency to get cross-threaded pretty easily, and chasing the threads will remove any debris here for a clean installation. With the new steering shaft installed, the steering rack can now be positioned in front of the lower cross member. Because the rack will need to be aligned with the lower steering shaft joint while pushing it into place on its mounts, I've got some M8 by 100 millimeter bolts to help hold it in position for installation. When reinstalling or replacing the factory power rack, there's a centering divot that can be held in place by a tapered M12 by 1.5 millimeter bolt or Porsche Tool 9132. This alignment locking feature is not included with the VW manual rack, so you'll want to ensure that the rack remains centered when aligning the steering wheel position. You may notice here that the notch on the spline shaft is facing a different direction from the notch on the factory power rack. If they were closely aligned, another person could simply hold the steering wheel straight so that it's properly centered with the steering rack while installing the U-joint. But in this case, the steering wheel will need to be removed and adjusted after the fact, which is done by pulling the horn pad off of the wheel, disconnecting the ground wire for the horn contacts, removing the 24 millimeter nut, and then repositioning the wheel. And when reinstalling the steering wheel, the 24 millimeter nut is torqued to a value of 45 newton meters or 33 foot pounds. Once the universal joint is aligned at the top of the rack, it can be threaded onto the spline shaft while pushing the rack back towards the cross member. The steering rack will mount tilted back at about a 45 degree angle, but the ultimate placement will be dictated by the intermediate shaft as the bolts are tightened down. The top plate on the rack neatly tucks under the edge of the cross member support, and there should be just enough clearance for the pieces to easily join together. With everything in place, the mounting bolts can be swapped out for the factory specification M8 by 60 millimeter bolts, which are torqued to 23 newton meters or 17 foot pounds. And then the 13 millimeter nut and bolt for the steering shaft can be installed and tightened to 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds. This is a good time to confirm that the steering rack is still in a centered position according to the marks on the top of the metal plate, and then the steering wheel can be aligned and reinstalled. Now that the steering rack is secured, the tapered bolts on the tie rod ends can be inserted into the steering knuckles on each side of the car, and the 19mm nuts torque down to a value of 50 newton meters or 37 foot-pounds. At this point, the front sway bar can be reinstalled below the car, along with the front wheels, and the car can be lowered to the ground for further alignment. My alignment target was 1 16th inch of toe in across the front wheels. I used a tape measure and a set of nylon strings aligned parallel to the center line of the car to check the toe in. Once I set the string distance at 4.5 inches from the center of the front wheels on both sides, I squared off the jack stands across the front and rear of the car. The 944 features a track width that's 1.1 inches wider in the front than it is in the rear, and this set of D90 wheels on the car are staggered with 16 by 7 inch 55 offset in the front and 16 by 8 inch 52 offset in the rear. So with the alignment string squared away, I was getting measurements of 4 and 7 eighths inches to the center point of the rear wheels versus the 4 and a half inch measurement on the front. After triple checking all the measurements on the setup and dialing in some minor adjustments on the tie rods, I was consistently getting a total measurement of 9 and 1 16 inches on the back of the front wheels and an even 9 inches on the front, which was right on the money for a 1 16 inch toe in. So with that out of the way, let's take the car out and see how it drives. All right, so driving the 944 with the manual steering rack. As for initial impressions, the steering is obviously a little bit heavier at parking lot speeds, but it feels great once the car is up and rolling above 20 miles per hour, and the feedback is notably better than the power rack. The steering wheel does experience a bit more movement when traveling over large bumps or holes in the road surface, but it mostly tracks straight with minimal annoyance on moderately bumpy roads. You definitely get a better sense of how the tires are responding to the road surface, and that transfers directly to the steering wheel for a nice feel. Things like parallel parking are a bit more of a chore, but not impossible, and as long as you can keep the car rolling, it can be maneuvered without too much effort, but certainly not as easily as the factory power steering. Overall, the manual steering kit is a quality setup, so if you're tired of dealing with power steering leaks, and you want an improvement in driving feedback on your 944, this kit may be worth a look.